Friday Night Racing on Off The Ball Brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland Love every racing moment Visit hri.ie all right, you're very welcome along to Friday Night Racing this week. We've got John Duggan with us in the studio. John, how are you getting on? Great, you're 18 days to Chatham, buzzing I'm, about it. I was going to ask how long, and you were like, 18 days, five minutes, yeah. six hours. Yeah. Not that we're counting down, but we are. At this we time. are counting, Ger. I just buzzed about it. And we've all the stable visits this week with Gordon and Willie and Tom is down there, Tom alone. And uh, it's just it's a case now getting the homework done and getting the videos replayed and uh, getting into a bit of a bunker about uh, your own opinions and your own journey to the course and the, and the week and, and everybody's planning that. The last kind of prep runs are happening? Yeah, this is actually a good time to back outsiders and maybe horses from other yards. I remember going to Leopardstown a few years ago and making a killing on outsiders from like kind of shoulder yards because all the big yards have been, their whole day at Leopardstown and before Christmas is about schooling horses for Chapman. So maybe, not going to say that they don't have any attention on the racing but maybe it's not as, 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 as clear in their mind as As in be. some other yards get to focus on these races yes. as highlights of the year, knowing yeah. full well that yeah. some of the other horses will be getting ready. Exactly. So Matt Lanster is running on Sunday uh, at Nace, and he might not be going to Cheltenham. He might be going to Cheltenham. Andy Dufresne, I know, is not going to Cheltenham. Um, so we're getting, to real, we're getting to the stage where you really want to be having your run now. You don't want to be getting too much on from now to be having another run because then you won't be able to peak of the week. Okay, so lots of strategy to go into uh, this weekend. We'll talk about that a bit more uh, later on in the show. As ever, if you want to get involved in the conversation, you can leave a comment on whatever stream you're watching this on, because obviously we stream live across all of Off The Ball social channels every Friday afternoon at 3 o'clock, and then we're live again on the radio after 8. Friday Night Racing is brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. Love every racing moment. Visit hri.ie or follow the new Twitter account at HRI Racing and the hashtag is every racing moment. Our special guest this week, though, is trainer Brian McMahon. Brian, how are you doing? Congratulations on a great week last week. Yeah, t thanks very much, Sherry. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a good day last Sunday and uh, we've been on a bit of a high uh, since, so yeah, it's pretty good. So you had a double last Sunday. Was it, a, John was saying, 100 150 to 1, uh, Seskanan and Semolek. Yeah, a score would have been a score would have been nice, John, wouldn't it, on the double? Um, That's your chat in the money, uh, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> and a bit more. Um, <laughs> we got we got a few we got a few quid out of it, so um uh, listen, you you need you need to you know it's it, it's it, the game is tough enough and you need to you need to try and make hay and collect a few quid when when they do win. So yeah, thankfully we got a few bills paid this week. Did you do the double, Brian? Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I did. I did. I did. Uh, I did, John. I I I fancied the both of them to be fair. I just they were in great nick um, and and the conditions. Of the races, the ground conditions, everything was everything was lining up, and it's just very rare that that happens. Um, and and I, I thought beforehand, I said, well, sure, it's it's you know I get two winners a year. I'm not going to have two in a day, but sure, I'm just going for the sake of a couple of quid. I'm going to chance to have a, an each way double. And uh, yeah, when the first fella won, I said, well, that's that. The second fella has absolutely no chance. He he'd want to be a hundred to one to back it, but but. Uh, yeah, I suppose, um, you know, as Ben Morrison says, you, you, you get days like this, and that was one of them, you know. I suppose what's rare is wonderful. You, you talked about having um, two winners a year. Just for people who are unfamiliar with your yard, how many horses do you actually have in training? Uh, six. Well, I'm a restricted trainer, Ger, so that means um, you can only have four returned in training at any, as part of your licence, four returned in training at any one time. <laughs> Now, like most things, you know, there's small bits and pieces of ways around it. So you can you can have four in at one time, but you can return one out and return another fella back in. So I have six, seven, eight, that kind of way. I suppose I suppose constant six kind of thing. The other thing, um, I've had it been uh, on a high all week. You're not a full time trainer with that number of of horses in the yard. You have a day job, is that right? Yeah, yeah, that, that's right, Ger. Uh, I work in, I'm a biochemist um, and I work in a, a, an American multinational over in Tulla and uh, in East Clare. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I tried I tried to train in full time um, up to 2016, 2017, and, and uh, I, I just couldn't make a pay, to be honest. And, and uh, yeah, you'd be just... You, I was, you'd be stone broke most of the time, just trying to go from day to day. And uh, I said, you know, this can't continue. Like, and uh, I, um, 
like as I said, you said give eight years in college studying biochemistry. I says I may as well try and make some bit of use out of that and 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 get a few quid. And I thought at the start, you know, I said, well, I'll give this six months, get a few quid, and go back at it full time. But you know, when I came in, I, I just I really enjoyed it, especially meeting, you know, meeting different people and people that have. I came in Monday morning and no one had a had a breeze, you know, that had two winners at at, at the weekend, and 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 that sort of puts it into perspective and and. Uh, takes you outside the race and bubble, which is very important. Like, Joe, I deal a good bit with the Chinese, um, with, 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 you know, the, we're in med device and, and we're, um, I'm over and back to China a good bit. And, uh, uh, like we speak with them most mornings. So you see the, the trouble that they're having with the, you know, they've been locked up in their houses with the last four or five weeks. Um, and, and you see, you know, there's a much, much bigger world out there than, than racing. And uh, uh, when you're in the thick of it full time and, and, you know, every runner was was so important because you needed it to, you know, to, to get the diesel home. And um, when you're in that sort of a cocoon, it, it becomes all consuming. And um, it, 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 this with, with the job, it just gives you a bit of perspective and, and you don't put yourself on. You're not under the same pressure then, you know. Yeah, and you, you get to enjoy it a bit more. Can you talk to us a bit about that decision then to go back into the workforce? Obviously, having spent eight years in college, you knew at some point that this might be an option and you, you built the fallback for yourself. But I'd say there's still a little bit of heartbreak when you go from I'm chasing my dream here to, you know, becoming a, a worker again. And was that a difficult decision over a period of time or did it just become inevitable? Um, well, I suppose the eight years in college, I probably could have sped that up a little bit if I'd went in a bit more. But anyways, that's it, it took that. <laughs> it, 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 it it took that. Seen a group, time. Brian. Yeah, exactly, exactly, John. Yeah, exactly. But uh, I suppose, I suppose, um, I started from zero base, Ger. So I, I, I never had, and still don't. Uh, har I didn't harbor any ambitions of, of. Uh, you know, building up a big string of 50 horses. You know, I was just happy with the lifestyle of of uh, riding out, going racing, um, and 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 the the buzz and the kick out of it is, you know, I'd imagine it's 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 like being on some sort of drugs. It's just it's the the buzz out of a winner is uh, keeps you going, it keeps you going for a long time. Like, how does it compare to uh, scoring the winning goal in a 1997 All Ireland winning? Uh... Uh, Final against um, Galway for the banner, uh, Brian, because you you won the minor title on the same day the seniors won. That's that's right, uh, John. Yeah, that was like that was a fantastic day and a, a fantastic year. Um, just to be a Clare to be a Clare man, you know the the the, um, the county was in an absolute high. Everyone was you know walking around with their chests out like for the first time in for well well since since ninety five we we just we just there was a great buzz and an atmosphere around the county. Like I remember going into Flannans as a first year and. And the tip lads and the borders, the tip lads and the Galway lads, they'd be laughing at the Clare lads, you know, been been trounced in Munster finals. So we were kind of used to that. And to go around then, um, uh, you know, in those in those years with with chest outs, and we were, you know, all Ireland champions. And uh, in '97, it just felt inevitable um, that that the seniors were were going to win, and we were just riding on their coattails. And uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely a rising tide lifts all boats, and and um, it, it was, yeah, it was super. There, obviously, there, there was I, I had a terrible game in the, in the final, so you know, it, while you'd be delighted to win, you'd be you'd be you'd be kind of disappointed in yourself that uh, you know um, you, you probably didn't play as well as you'd have hoped to play, but sure. You know, it, it's it's kind of irrelevant now, yeah, and after a while, it it becomes irrelevant. But um, sorry, hang on, you were disappointed with your own performance on the day. Yeah, oh, yes, I, I, yeah, I got, yeah, I was, I was out of it. I was Mark, I was marking a guy called uh, Owen McDonough. He was, he was the Galway captain, and uh, Joe, his dad was president of the GA at the time, and uh, so they were, you know, I, I, I guess the the PR guys were hoping that that Joe would get to present the cup to his son, and. Uh, uh, Owen was definitely hoping that because he gave me an awful skinning on the day, and uh, like I, I got the I, I got a goal all right, but it was it was a Gary Lineker effort from about a yard and a half. <laughs> that that, that I, I I don't know what part of it what part of it it hit me, but it went in anyways. But uh, yeah, so so you you would be selfishly thinking a little bit about that at at the time, and um, 
but um, but I, I guess I guess there's the buzz would be similar, even though yeah, I, I, there is very few, you know, very little to match the buzz of a winner. To be honest, I, I mean, it's a two point game at the end, and you scored a goal in the middle of it. I would, I would certainly be going. I scored the winning goal in an Ireland final. <laughs> oh, that oh, would be oh, how. Oh, Oh, Ger, don't, don't, don't worry about that. We, we definitely lived off it for far too long. And uh, um, above in, above in UCG, um, Tony, Tony Horse Regan, who was in charge of the sports uh, department in the Ireland team, and he it was a good for a few of us. Went up on scholarship, and uh, yeah, the, that scholarship money wasn't spent buying boots, boots, and, and gear. So uh, yeah, we 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 made plenty of use of it, all right. And come here, who was on the team? Like any anybody who actually makes it as a senior in the next couple of years? Um, no, do you know, and, and I guess it's one of those things. John Redden was captain, and and he he went and played an All Ireland senior. But it was one of those things. Gro Constant played played senior, right? But it was one of those things. I think that where, um, you know, a minor team that makes a breakthrough, they, they kind of. You, you see, you know, it's happening in Westmead, the footballers and Leash, they kind of go off the rails a little bit. And, and it's it, it's subsequent teams that come through. And, and uh, like my brother was on the minor team the following year. And, and uh, I suppose he, he could see the error of our ways. And, you know, he went on to play senior for, for 10 years for Clare. And, and lots of them, Tony Griffin, Tony Carmody, Jerry Quinn, all came after that team. And, and it, it's, I don't know, it, it's definitely a thing because... Uh, it's replicated um, around the country, you know. Yeah, totally. So there's some, like, if you look at the some of the Kilkenny lads who didn't win at minor, go on to them all time greats. Well, Henry Shefflin. Um, yeah, well, we, we, uh, Henry was on the, the Kilkenny team that we beat in the semi final um, that year, and and they do say that you know a lot of it, like uh, you know, um, um, David Tierney was on the Galway team and 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 Dear McLoon and, and and a lot of it. If you don't get success at that age, uh, I guess it breeds hunger rather than you know going around with a full belly. And one last thing, I'm always interested in how a team that wins a minor All Ireland is perceived in the aftermath. That everybody's like, "God, oh, you guys have made it now." Particularly on the day when the seniors have done, because you get to go to all the senior functions. And... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And 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 we 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 were on their coattails at all the functions and. Um, Looking back at it, it was probably too much, you know. We 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 probably believed our own hype a little bit. And listen, then then you know, you're only minor at the time, and and there's a lot of, you know, it can be like a precocious two year old horse. You've you've got to develop uh, mentally and physically, and and um, uh, and you, you know, and and just be a good enough hurler. And and there's probably lots that were good enough at that age, but weren't good enough. You know that that's definitely a combination, and and, and you know um, definitely was applied to my case as as well as not being as near as committed as as uh, you know I wish I wish I wish I had been in the subsequent years. My sorry, go on. Um, my dad um, was from uh, Quinn, um, uh, Brian, and uh, that 1997 final was one of the best days of my life, and the senior game was incredible, and Claire were hurled the best hurling that Clare ever hurled in that period they hurled in about 20 minutes at the start of the second half and Tiberi scored two late goals Dave Fitzgerald saves from John Lahey James O'Connor puts it over the other end Loch Nan's behind the goal fist pumping and when the final whistle went we, th we, we, we just went bananas because we beaten Cork uh, Tipperary and Kilkenny that year Tipperary twice but if you're in such a high after the minor game, uh, Brian, did did you watch the senior game? Well, how were you feeling? Were you still buzzed? Yeah. What was the kind yeah. of? Like I, I can remember, I can remember uh, every uh, every near every score, all those moments that you listed out, John. But I suppose most clear people would, you know. But like I said, there was for me there was an air of inevitability about the seniors all year that you know, like. You know, not 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 in the last minute of an All Ireland does does uh, Liam Cahill get a goal off of off of Brian Lohan to to win the All Ireland for for Tip that you know that just doesn't happen to Lohan and uh, uh, it, to us it, there was nothing sure that that you know Clare would go down the field and get um, another score and you know. Uh, it, it was just it was magic like James O'Connor who who himself would say he had a very mixed Midland All Ireland final in '95, you know for the ball to be popped out to him from from 
Colin Lynch and 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 into the into Hill sixteen on their only strikes over the bar to win it. Like um, I remember the medal ceremony, they played U two's perfect day, and uh, yeah, it was it was it was just like that. Yeah, James, he was unstoppable that year. Um, when did the racing bug happen? Are you from a racing family? No, no, there's. Uh, there's no horses at all in our family or, or, or nothing to do with it. It, it, it was, um, uh, I guess it was when we were in, in college, Ger, we were, we, we were knocking around uh, Wood Key there uh, when we were meant to be in, in lectures in UCG and we, we'd been in the, in the uh, Ladbrokes betting office and, and the Goldpost pub next door and we were kind of just drinking pints and having bets and I said there was some buzz out of it. I loved, I loved kind of, and this I think is, you know where racing can set, when where racing can really come into zone. There's just a lot of you know, John, a lot of nuance about it. And the more you you learn about it, the more intriguing it becomes. And and you, then you it takes a hold of you. And 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 uh, it it started from there. I, I was um, Paddy Hassett was was uh, with us in college, and uh, his dad trained down in Quinn uh, Doney. And I said, geez, uh, rather than being on the periphery of this, I'd love to actually go and see. What a yard it looked like. So I was, I was there. I wasn't there ten minutes, and they put me up on a horse up the gallop, never ridden before. I went up the gallop at a million miles an hour, and thought, "This is, this is for me." And uh, yeah, it just it went from there. We used to go in then weekends and and any chance of got the holidays or anything like that. And uh, working like cleaning out and and doing yeah, all that. Uh, uh, yeah, and yeah, exactly. Yeah, just 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 uh, because I loved it. Yeah, mucking out and 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 riding out. Like I'd say, you know, the first month I was going or the first couple of months, I'd say fall off three four times a, a morning. But uh, you you know, the second month then maybe only fall off twice, and 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 you just kind of I was winging it away to be honest. And the lads were really good, you know. It gave me a good slagging every time I fell off, and and uh, yeah, that made you hang on a bit better. And and after that, then, um, um, so I'd come down from Dublin. I was in UCD at the time, and and I got a job then back in Clare, and um, that it, it was into the teeth of the recession, no nine, I'd say, and and we got made redundant, and I says, said, geez, chance now, um, I'll go at it full time. So I rode off to. Uh, five or six of the top trainers in England and um, Nicky Henderson got back to me it's, it, like, he must have been stuck for staff he was stuck for staff and, and gave me give me a job as a stable lad so can I just uh, you know, so just to everybody needs to pay attention to this bit right so you ride off to Real Madrid and Man United and Barcelona <laughs> and Real Madrid are like yeah no problems come on down yeah yeah that's that's close enough to how it was now I was writing off with a CV that that would make Gareth Bale blush, where, where, where <laughs> you know, whereas you know, in, in actual fact, it was uh, it should have just read Brian McMahon Chancer, and uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, but but like that, I, I guess I just winged it and winged it and winged it, and um, like I remember Corky Brown, who'd be the famed head lad there. Um, um, he, 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 I think Nicky wanted to fire me after a week, and and he'd have been right to. But Cor, uh, Nick uh, Corky just took some bit of a shine to me, and and told the boss to, told the governor to say he's all right, give him another chance. And uh, by degrees, then it just, you know, you got into the hang of it a, a lot better, and and then it it went from there. But uh, what had yeah, you done? One. What had you done that made Nicky Henderson want to fire you? Oh, it's, oh yeah, he heaps of different things, but um. um yeah, it's, I think the, my saddle went sideways one day in the gallop. I just had the girths tightened enough. I wasn't, you know, and and the Hassans won't mind me saying this, but when we went over to England, like you'd have your non-slip, you'd have a soft pad, hard pad, a sheet, and girths and straps coming from everywhere that I wasn't used to at all. And uh, and uh, yeah, the tack just went sideways with me, uh, with me on the gallop, and I went out the side door, and Nicky was like, I don't, yeah, absolutely doing his nut. But uh, um, and he was like Corky batting for me, and and uh, it it uh, yeah, I gradually gradually improved and got into the hang of things, and uh, it was a marvelous time to be over there. Like the the quality of horse was unbelievable. You know, it was. Sprinter Sacra and Binocular, Pontius Stones, uh, 
Bob's work. He was my, he was my ride until until they find as a young horse until they found out he was he was a half decent and then the, the one of the good jockeys on him. But uh, <laughs> um, he was yeah it, 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 uh, and uh, um, you know the, the the right Barry Garrity had just taken over from Mick Fitz and and you'd Felix the Giles and Dave Bass. Jerry McGrath, um, you know, Jerry McGrath had just started at the same time as me, and and we 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 became really good mates. We're, we're very good mates still. We'd speak a couple of times a week, and I go over to Lambourne and stay with him. And and uh, uh, Nico de Boinville had just started, and it was, it was a really good time to be there. Big operation, Brian. Big operation. Yeah. Uh, what, I what was Nicky's secret to success? Do you think? Um. <laughs> It's it's really hard to know, John. Like um, he's really good facilities, which I, I guess is a you know there's a grass a mile and a quarter grass or, grass gallop with a slight incline that uh, is you know he could gallop the horses together in a bunch and it was like a mini race day. I, I guess to be kind of half hardened like maybe like the Kilkenny hurlers, even though he wasn't hard on the horses, but the they, they they just got a kind of a quality of training that and 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 he like Cheltenham this next week or you know three weeks time that's his that's his all Ireland he doesn't really mind what happens up to that uh, everything is geared towards Cheltenham so horses would be brought along really really slowly but a week before Cheltenham they'd be really fit and they'd be awful fresh you know you'd have you'd have loose ones everywhere the week before Cheltenham they were in such good such good form getting getting the the riders off and and uh i i i think that's he's patient like and but i suppose when he has the credit in the bank he's able to be patient with own uh, get owners to be patient with him and and i it's hard to put your finger on it like jerry mcgrath still a mate uh, brian is nikki's best one for cheltenham is a shishkin i i i was i was in lambert last week john and uh um I was just asking Jerry, how does Siskin and Chantry House work together, or have they worked together? And he said they have gone up the grass a couple of times together, and there wouldn't be a hair's breadth between them. And uh, Ch- Chantry House is three times the price of of Siskin. So, yeah, I was on I was on the anti post uh, book after that, and I had a few quid on, on Chantry House. And 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 he said his own one. In the Ballymore, uh, a horse called Glynn. He's really looking forward to riding that. He thinks it's a big chance. Fascinating stuff. And you had a horse that went to Cheltenham a few years ago, Powers Bomb in 2015, won a Galway, and then you had a, win- a runner at Cheltenham that was nearly a winner, uh, finished behind Tully East in a novice handicap chase. And I think two out, he was in the lead. Yeah, I ju- actually jumped the last in front, John, and, and uh, my God, he gave us some thrill. But he, he'd been a little keen through his race, and he was... He was um, he jumped only Midland, and I'd say he had, uh, you know, he had a, he he was in the red coming to the last in terms of his petrol, and 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 that hill found him out. Then he was passed up the hill. And he finished, uh, he finished fourth in the end. But it was, it was yeah, it was a marvelous run to be fair. And and um, I was hoping to to get him over there this year. But he ran a thoroughness yesterday, and he just kind of got stuck in the ground a little bit. And he probably won't get into the grand annual now. Brian, what was the point of going over to Nicky Henderson? Was that your dream at that stage to use that as a springboard to become a full-time trainer? Is that what was the thought process? Yeah, I'd say so, Jerry. As subconsciously, as you know, as subconsciously said, um, it, it, it gives you, it, you know, to say that you were in Nicky's for a couple of seasons, it gives you kind of a, a bit of credit or a bit of standing to say, well, you know, this fella might have. You know something what he's talking about if he's if he's kept his ears open at all he'll he'll have learned something and and I guess that was that was the idea behind it yeah yeah so and, yeah. and and you know at the time you know at the time ah uh, there was there was not a whole pile happening here like um there probably wasn't too many jobs in racing and and in my industry you know it it, it was tight like so the decision to come home and was that straight away to come home and and open up your own yard no so. Uh, um, I gave three years in um, in in England, and you know, obviously I was I was th- around thirty when I went over, so I was thirty three, thirty four. So, you know, on two hundred pound or one hundred ninety pound a week, this isn't going to be sustainable for too much longer. So uh, I I got a job 
in Sligo, they were making blood tests for horses. So I said, combining both both uh, the science and the race and, and the horses. And um, but I, I was at, I did it for about a year, and you know we were taking blood from the horses and, and from a racing yard in in Sligo. And uh, I would kind of go out and take blood and come back into the lab and test it. And after a while, I was going out riding a lot, riding two lots, and then I was half the day out in the in the racing yard and. And, and and an hour in the lab and, and I said, well, sure, I'll go, I'm going to go and do this full time. And so at, that's, that's over. at that point, obviously, again, that's a big leap. It's like, OK, I've got to back myself and I've got to take all the things that I've learned from from everything, really, and become a businessman. At the same time, the art of training as well. So what was that like? You must have, That must have been a, a big decision and also you must have loved it. Yeah, it, a big decision. It was a tough decision, Ger, and... Uh, um, I had a girlfriend at the time that had moved over from Lamborn with me. She was into horses and she she was not best pleased by it like and uh um yeah it, and and it's um it, but I I kind of I just wanted to do it and I was driven at uh, driven at that stage and I spent it, it, every hour of the day in the air trying to trying to um make the thing work and I suppose I suppose when you're at that, you're uh, you can't see the wood from the trees. You know, I got a winner in the, after in the first couple of months, and then it, it went really slack. And and um, I was probably stressed way more than I should have been, and stressed about the thing. And and um, yeah, the, um, Frankie went went back to England in after that, and and uh, so it, it, like. It is enjoyable, but it has, uh, you know, the, it definitely has has um, negative consequences too. You know, when when um, cash is tight and and you put yourself under pressure, it's it's uh, it's it's you know the the good days are great, but the bad days are, are not great either. Yeah. So, I, I kind of it's, it's the same question really I asked earlier on. And that that obviously you lived through that, and there's like. Um, the life of the artist somewhat where you have to live this thing every day and you don't really know what finance is going to come through at the end that's kind of in the lap of the sporting gods the the decision to have tried that and then for it to have worked to the level that it worked and to go back and go actually i can do these two things i can have a life where there's balance i guess it's like an intercarrier ga player now striving for a bit of balance and having a day job and having this thing that you're good at and you love is this the happiest that you've been in your life then? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, um, and and also, like, the mistakes I made when I started off, uh, I needed to make them to learn from them, you know? And, and uh, if, if I hadn't gone and done it, you, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have learned from, from all those mistakes and, and, and to, you know, to have the perspective now that, well, they, they will run terrible for a while, and but not panic, they'll come around again. So, so yeah, definitely in, in, um, in, in, in a good enough place. Now, the boss, the boss, Monday, Tuesday morning, I got a text off the boss on, on Tuesday evening, and uh, Monday evening, and he says, uh, can I see you tomorrow morning at seven, at seven o'clock? And I said, like, Jesus. And, uh, um, you know, it, they, they need to, the, the the work needs to get its fair share too, and and probably you know for the last while, phew, um, it, there's only been one winner, but but uh, yeah, he he's given me a good shake up there now, and I, I need to probably do a little bit more while, while I'm while I'm in work. I thought I you were going to say work a bit. He was giving me to work a bit, or give him the tips. Yeah, where's my double? Oh, 151 yeah, double. It's a, yeah, yeah. a panacea yeah, for yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, his boss. His boss is actually a good racing man, so uh, <laughs> the boss's boss. Yeah, exactly. I think if I think if I get in any more trouble, I'll just go over his head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Two quick uh, questions coming in. One by text: Does being a biochemist by day mean that Brian is very scientific in his approach to training horses, or does he do it by feel? Uh, I, I think it's I think it's by feel, but you try you try question things in your head and see does this make sense and and you know for example uh powers bomb ran yesterday and ran okay he finished fifth um and uh, but he turned in in the lead and he just he faded and i'm going home then with in the in the jeep with with my neighbor and and the guy i work with john staunton we're going through things in our head of you know obviously you can't 
uh, asked the horse why did he fail and you're then trying to uh, come up with theories of of you know why he might have faded and you're doing that a lot but so it's by feel and then you know you pr- propose a theory and see does that actually make sense or could that could that work so it's I guess uh, it, the scientific background helps in helps with reasoning uh, but we'd be far from uh, methodical about like you know we'd be riding out there in the dark and and it'd be you know things can be up in a bit of a heap so we wouldn't be methodical like that but it helps with, with trying, reasoning of why things are as they are yeah okay i'd say riding out in the dark even even just the practicalities of riding after a day's riding out after a day's work does that mean you need to do floodlights or like are the horses no spooked? well no no they're 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 used to that uh, when evening racing comes in now we'll, we we should have an awful advantage because sure we're we don't get going until the lads around would say um, you know, a e right now, or is it not dark enough for you yet? Like so, <laughs> you know. It's a, it, but it, but that, you know, from from November through to about now, it's really tight from really tight for time. So yeah, we'd have the high vis jackets on and and uh, just trust that the horses know where they're going. And and that's that's yeah. But they they get out and you know horses horses are a creature of routine. So you know it doesn't really matter to them after a while once they get used to going out in the evenings and, and chilling out during the day, you know, they just get used to it. Yeah, that makes sense. We'll definitely look out for your horses for the evening meetings. And then another one from <laughs> um, Grace on YouTube wants to know, what did you think of the handicapper's reaction to last week's win? Seven pounds to a 14-year-old seems harsh. Uh, I think he got six. Seskinan got six. And, uh, it, like, you don't mind, Ger, you don't mind getting weight when the thing has won because you've collected a few quid, uh, um maybe off betting backing him and you've collected a few quid in the prize money and uh you don't mind it's 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 when they finish second or third and you get two or three pounds for not getting the win that's when you find it harsh so no i i i i I'd have no qualms with it to be honest that's fair enough uh, brian uh, does this like double last weekend change anything for you are you still going to combine the biochemistry job and the training have you been offered horses in the last few months what's the kind of 12 to 18 month plan now for you have you thought about that that far yeah a little there, yeah i've got a good few calls john during the week and and lads looking to give horses but uh i'm happy enough with the way it's going um i'll i'll try to keep the six to eight horses and uh yeah I, don't, I have no plans to expand too much more than that i'm, I'm just um maybe tr- maybe if i can improve the quality uh, a little bit and tr- maybe replace a couple that that are not pulling their weight that's that's the way to go but but uh i've no in no great uh desire or ambition to 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 get more you know all right friday night racing is brought to you by horse racing ireland uh let's move on because the tote irish injured jockey charity fund Back on track last week after Keith Donoghue's selection, Queensbrook ran out a very easy winner last weekend at Gorham Park. 20 lengths, I think, 20 odd lengths. I was looking at the result and going, Did you back it? Of course I did. This fund <laughs> now stands at 630 euros and we will look to keep the momentum going this week. The Bobby Doe Chase is the feature tomorrow at Fairy House, their last meeting before the Easter Festival. On Sunday, there's a high class seven race card from NACE as well. Meanwhile, in the UK, there's going to be five graded races coming from Kempton Park, which should see plenty of Cheltenham challengers emerge. And a reminder, new Tote customers can get up to €50 euro cash back for opening a new account. Check out the tote.com for more details. We should talk about uh, what's going on in Ireland first. Yeah, we should. Uh, Ger, uh, Ferry House tomorrow, we got a grade three. Uh, this racing TV thing, the, the race times are like greyhound times, they're like train times. 2.17, uh, the grade three juvenile hurdle. Uh, Battle of Wills, rated 96 in the flat. For Gordon Elliott, Davy Russell, William Mullins, uh, Game and Original could be anything. Paul Tannen picks that one, and Willie's got a few runners. So, but not a race to really have a bet in. The Bobby Joe Chase, a lot of horses here that are light of better days, including Bells Hill, who's gone off the boil. Pleasant Company's target is probably the Grand National. Sub Lieutenant hasn't been running that well. Maybe Acapella Bourgeois was third in the Irish Grand National last year. Maybe Acapella Bourgeois, but once again, I'm not that inspired by it. Uh, on Sunday in Nace, we got a Grade Three chase uh, over two miles at ten past two. Articulum is a course distance winner if he stays in his feet he's like been falling and, and unseating all over the place he was third in the arc at Cheltenham last year I think Articulum might might have a going day and might have a winning day on Sunday at Nace uh, then the 310 a great two novice hurdle uh, I like the look of Mount Leinster Mount Leinster uh, was very impressive for William Mullins over Christmas disappointed last time out on a hot race but Mount Leinster might not be going to Cheltenham uh, he might be but he might not be and I think uh, he might deserve another
of the chance Mount Leinster in, in the red and white colours uh, for Willie Mullins. When there's a bit of a debate about a horse going to Cheltenham and the horse is running this weekend, they're like absolutely pushing the horse to the absolute maximum to see if it's worthy of his place in Cheltenham or they're... No, I still think they would, they would leave a bit. They would still leave a bit. And maybe the, the, the proximity of his entry would suggest to me that he's not going. Like Andy Dufresne is in the race and he's not going to Cheltenham. Um, maybe they need to take a bit more time with this horse who can be a little bit in and out at Leinster. Okay. Um, let me just get some uh, yeah. of Brian's thoughts on that, Brian. Do you have, what have you got this weekend running yourself? N- nothing, nothing, Chair. Right. I don't think. No, no. Fair no, enough. Nothing. And have you any thoughts on what's happening in um, Fairy House tomorrow? Um, no. I but I saw. Uh, I was in Fairy House about three weeks ago, and and um, Arsenal Oliver McKiernan's won the maiden hurdle there, and I see he runs off one sixteen on Sunday. And he looked a proper horse in the making. The horse called Aaron's Day, and uh, uh, I think off one sixteen he has. Uh, geez, he could have ended up to maybe a stone in hand. Uh, I think he. I think he could. I think he'll win. And um, uh, Saturday in Kempton in the the Kingwell, I, I was speaking to Tom Simmons, who was in this, who was assistant to Nicky when I was there and we stayed good old buddies and he runs a horse called Song for Someone and uh, he said he's he said he's really improving and, it, you know, to win the King, well, he doesn't need to improve all that much and uh, yeah, I'd be absolutely delighted for Tom. He's a, he's a gent uh, um, and, you know, he's probably not hit the headlights uh, the headlines the way he, the way his um, talent would deserve and, and and to win a Kingwell on Saturday uh, would be a great fill up for him and the Arden and, and I think he's I think he's a right chance. Okay, so song for someone on Saturday, Kempton and Aaron's Day on Sunday. Yeah, eleven to four song for someone, a second favourite at the moment in a race uh, that I would probably agree with Brian. Like she had a battle favourite, but it was a handicap hurdler. Um, I'd be, and when Oliver McKiernan does have a good one, he tends to do to, to, well with a member follow the plan. Had a great run a few years ago with Oliver, and, and he's consistent to, to push himself for the game. Uh, the one I'm going for for the charity bet, look, at, you can always bet on the uh, UK racing on the tote. It doesn't always have to be Irish racing. I was at Leperstown Christmas, and I had a few bets on the Welsh National through the tote. Uh, so the one I'm going to go for each way, uh, the 245 at Newcastle, the Eider Chase is a marathon, a four mile chase, one of these kind of Grand National trials. The horse is glittering love for Nicky Richards, trained up in the north of England, progressive horse, likely raced, has been running at the track, was third last time, I think a very interesting runner, between 7 and 10 to 1, glittering love in the 2.45 at Newcastle tomorrow, but we'll definitely pull some of yours out as well, Brian, and put them in a, a post on offtheball.com, because you've said some very interesting things. Do you have one for Cheltenham, That maybe not of the Nicky ones, but is there one horse you're really looking forward to seeing at Cheltenham? Um... I, I'm going to put up my own fella, John. Um, Shame Lake and the Kim Muir. I just had a look there on uh, on the phone before coming on, and he's fifty. He's a fifty to one poke, and uh, the the three miles two furlongs will will. Um, we like that. Right, rightly play at his strength. So I'd have a few quid each way in him. Like it'd be, you know, it'd be beyond belief. But I, 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 I think he's. I think he's a fair chance. Yeah. Who's going to ride it? Uh, own man, so so uh, own rides out with me and um, every day, and uh, he's serious, serious uh, man to work and a serious man to ride. And uh, he won it Sunday, and he will ride it again, take seven pounds off, and uh, geez, he's great value for the seven pounds. Brian, we've people on who obviously are like a, you know involved in some of the the biggest sports organisations in the world. In yeah. you know, like that's the the level of powerhouse that we have on. But your lifestyle <laughs> seems like something that I think a lot of people watching are going to be like, that's that guy has it. He's got it made. He's got the day job and the responsibility taken care of, and every waking hour is spent in the company of these amazing horses and like with all of the peccadillos that they have. And at the same time. You know, you're having some success, and you're you're making your own way. It's like a, it's a beautiful balance you've got going. Uh, yeah, yeah, possibly from maybe from the outside, Jar, it might it might look that way, but um, you know, yeah, I guess every not everyone's life is perfectly in order. Like um, um, you know, uh, when 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 Frankie hit for hit back for England, we the we had a, a baby boy, uh, Keelan, and uh, he he's back in Lammer, so that's why I go over every every 
couple of weeks or every six weeks or so to see him and and uh, yeah that's that's tough like and and there's no question that it was probably racing racing that 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 left the situation the way it is so yeah well 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 things may look good there for the outside it's, it's you know it's it, it, it's not all roses fair enough all the decisions come with consequences i guess is the yeah the for sure yeah for sure yeah yeah, yeah. Well, listen, yeah. it's been brilliant having you on. It's a remarkable story. Continued success. And we're all going to pile in now on the... Um, uh, Shemaleak. Shemaleak and the Kim Shemaleak to one. He's, 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 um, uh, so by, around the time he got going, um, my dad had a brain a brain tumour. And uh, that was his favourite. You know, it's a song, Mogil um, I don't know, your listeners might... My, my, you know the, uh, the, the Specsavers ad where, where the farmer is shearing the sheep and he's shearing... He she ends up shearing the collie. You know, that, that, that song that's in the background is Mogil Lamar and the first line of it is, is uh, Shemaleak. Shemaleak, Mogil Lamar. And uh, it was my dad's favourite song. It was sung at his funeral. And uh, it'll be... It'll be um, just be very fit. Well, he's already done. He's already done. You know, he's won five times, so he's already doesn't know us a, a thing. But it'd be, it'd be awfully fitting if he could give us a run. Um, come, come Thursday the twelfth. Shame Lake is he's my hero. Is that it? Am I, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's my warrior. That's right, yeah, yeah. Is that it? He's my hero or warrior? Yeah, he's my hero. He's my right. hero. Yeah. Well, listen. Yeah, so. So yeah, it'd be very, very fitting. Absolutely. Well, listen. Best of luck with it. Thanks a million, as I said, for making the time to talk to us. No worries. Thanks, Up the banner, Brian. Cheers, Brian. Cheers, Brian. All the best. That was a great guest this week. Um, all the uh, unexpected stories that you, you oh, get from Ireland. All Ireland minor hurling winner. You're there on the day. You're what, under 18. You see the seniors win. Claire didn't win anything for years, and then like 20 years later, you're you're trying to win this year. You've got a Chatham horse. You've got a Chatham chance this year. I think as well. I, like obviously, it, it, and I, it's the same point. I just made it slightly differently though. That. The wonder of having somebody go to Navan last week and put up a double like that when the powerhouses have their best runners out who are all like chomping at the bit to prove fitness in time for the Olympics of National Hunt, which are we're on the doorstep of. But in the middle of all that, for a part-time trainer who's come the circuitous route to get there to pop up and to have two winners and go, yeah, I, I can exhibit or I can exist and coexist with Willie Mullins and Gordon Elliott and everybody else that has, um, you know, the, the power that they have is a fairly remarkable thing. Well, it's back to the Tom Foley and Donoli days and 1994 and going to Cheltenham and never been on a plane before and winning at Cheltenham with Charlie Swan and uh, Peter Casey a few years ago uh, with Fleming Star. Uh, these are the stories that make uh, racing really attractive to the broad mass and not just the, 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 the the superstars of, of the sport from the day to day. And yeah, we can't we can't ignore. Like they're all obviously brilliant as well. But these are the these are the stories that the tapestry of, of Gaelic games, the community, and and racing that they're all kind of naturally intertwining. And and also that the name hasn't been picked by you know somebody's kid for no reason. It's like this is the first few words of the song that was sung at my dad's funeral. It's yeah. like there's a resonance and the meaning to that. And him not knowing as well the next day. He doesn't, he doesn't know when he's going to have a winner with all, only, what, six to eight horses. And then to have two like within an hour and a half of each other, it's pretty special stuff. And hopefully for Brian that, you know, somebody will see this or whatever and say, oh, you know what, this guy can train. Because obviously he's picked up a lot from Nicky Henderson. He's, he's working in a, in a very interesting field regarding medicine. And all trainers do need is sometimes a break to see, you know what, this guy can train. Like, look at Gavin Cromwell, who we've had on the front on that racing before. Um, it was a farrier with Gordon Elliott and now has trained a champion hurdle winner the last year. It can be done. Absolutely. John, good stuff. Thanks right, for Jared. joining us this week. Um, I hope you enjoyed Friday Night Racing as much as we did this week. We'll be back next Friday afternoon on all of our social channels. The best place to get us is on offtheball.com or indeed on the Go Loud app where OTB Sports Radio is broadcasting 24 hours a day. Thanks a million. See you next week. Friday Night Racing on Off The Ball. And they're Brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. Love every racing moment. Visit hri.ie.